Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, June 9th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the very podcast of Vinny Terminal Link, episode uh, number uh, 741. And I'm wearing an appropriate shirt for today. Nice. Proud of Yay. Shirt. Still available at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. <clears throat> and there that's we just go. appropriate because I think I'm supposed to have a sounder here and I totally forgot to upload it or anything. <laughs> forgot what it was even Bam. called. Bam. What mic are you using, Jeff? Um, this one. Oh. It's not picking you up as much. You've Wow. Weird. Camping. I'll have to double check Camping. on your end because it's working fine Camping. on the other things. Uh, I think. Okay. I think it's this one. Here we go. <laughs> it's one of those episodes. <laughs> it's time to spill the tea. All the tea, none of the shade. Gary. I'm guessing. That's what <laughs> I know that's the sound, but that every time doesn't sound like tea spilling. That doesn't sound like tea pouring. No, tea pouring Just right. saying. <laughs> the phrase is "spill the tea," but you first have to pour the tea in order to spill it. Right. Huh? Huh? <laughs> We're decanting the tea. Is that better? Maybe we're not Maybe. spilling it. Ridiculous. I don't know. I'm debating on whether or not we should change that sound effect because we use it so few and rarely, and then this is always the reaction each time. Yeah. And maybe there was yeah. another one that I totally forgot about, but I saw tea pouring, and I'm like, that must be it. <laughs> yes. Um, it's that time again. It's all tea, no shade, uh, because... Social media erupted in rainbows after midnight, June 1st, which means it must be that season once again. Pride is here in 2024. Uh, so it's time for our annual review of the landscape of the LGBTQIA plus community here in the U.S. Um, we are not as well acquainted with what's happening around the world, so we apologize <laughs> ahead of time. But uh, more than ever legislation has taken over the country uh, in the way that they're trying to limit and ultimately remove equal human rights. Um, and I feel like this is a little bit of a broken record because we've kind of talked about this for the past couple of years, only I think it's just ramping up. And the biggest thing is that it's an election year. I mean, technically every year is an election year in some capacity, but right. We have our national election this year. We will be, you know, selecting who the administration will be of the federal government. Um, we are also going to be, I think, we're voting for the entire House and mm. uh, House of uh, Representatives and I think uh, half the Senate or something like that. So there's a lot on the federal level, but also you have your local municipalities, your state level, all of that kind of stuff. And the reality is that, like, all of it affects our lives um, from whether or not there are human relations commissions to codifying, you know, that we be 
that we be wow that we are recognized as like individuals who are part of the human society and that you know we should not be treated differently um in that case and damon and now jeff you two are living in the hotbed of ohio <laughs> which tends to be... well i meant politically <laughs> Ohio is technically a swing state, Jeff. It is it is one of those states where supposedly like we're one of those states that will decide one way or the other. I don't think that's ever actually ever been true per se, just to be personally to our personal opinion, but um well, no I'll tea. Um but that's apparently the the premise, the guys that we have right now. Um, so welcome to Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. It te- it tends to be <laughs> it tends to be a focus of things. I didn't necessarily want to be here, but well, and I will also say this. Um, I mean, I'm sure you're used to it too, but be ready for, especially if you listen to radio. Nope. Be ready for the well, if you did, um, the onslaught. Of, of political ads. I mean, you might even get whiffs of it in some of the things that you listen to if they have ads. Um, you will more than likely, especially in like the a ne- the next month or so, it will start all of the all of the ads. If they have, I mean, some have already started, but like all of the ads, all the advertisements, all the political campaign ads, uh, blah 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 blah. It's yeah, so much fun. And I'm trying to think. So as an example, um, for those that are listening and or watching, uh, if you go visit our website, uh, we're going to have a bunch of links. Um, I just added a new one called the Movement Advancement Project. It's a website that actually shows different types of political maps. And you can choose here in the U.S. your state. So in this case, it's a link to Ohio. But if you live in another state, you can choose from the drop down option to change it. So there's um, policy maps, e- equality maps and so on and so forth. So it kind of gives some nice quick facts about Ohio uh, percentage of adults and population um, that are estimated to be LGBTQ. Um, an overall tally talks about like protections, if there's laws that exist, those type of things. So could be a, a good way to look things uh, over and get a feel for stuff in your immediate area um, as an example of things. But I know that uh, the governor is not necessarily all that popular in certain regions of the state. Um, although it is ironic because I just thought about it. I was like, well, Jeff did technically leave a state with an, also an unpopular governor. So that's not probably too much of a change. <laughs> I mean, I want to get paid, so here I am. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I hear you on that front. I mean, I'm not happy about the local politics in my specific area, but again, I like being here and I like my job. And so, you know, there's that. Um, so there's also going to be a couple other links. Um, some of these we've had before, the ACLU mapping of legislative attacks on LGBTQ rights. Um, so the, um, American civil liberties union has consistently for a little while had these maps that show things in this case, um, it explains that they're tracking, um, f- over 500 bills here in the U S um, and they've rated or not graded, but they've color coded all the States. If you look at the map, the darker, the color of this kind of like lavenderish purple, the eggplant, um, that means there are more bills within that state that have been proposed, um, and it gives you updates on where they stand, if they were passed into law or defeated, um, if they're, you know, currently being advanced, introduced, all that craziness. Um, and it's it's a bit wild, you know? And it's interesting because I was I was watching watching or listening to something recently and they were talking about like how the advancement of like the equity creates these reactions in others because they just like, they don't mind us existing. They just don't like us having attention. Right. That's, that's, that's the T like, 
<laughs> keeping it as it is. Like we're we're fine with you like being you know being gay or whatever, but as long as you're doing it over there and quiet and complacent, like as long as you're doing it over there, we're fine. But since you know things have gotten louder and prouder um, in a lot of ways. Um, it's now becoming this, now we, we're a target. Now we are a, we are a political chip, as it were, um, in the good and bad of it all. Um, sometimes showing support gets you some good graces from people while also getting you some um, derision from others. And um, on the flip of that, showing anti, you know, LGBT is a great way to get people on your side right yeah and which is unfortunate yeah i i mean and this is one of the things i think that um yeah it it was interesting because someone it must have been a podcast they the way they phrased it i thought was really intriguing they said The fact that we are getting attention and becoming popular, like popular in entertainment, like Mm -hmm. like um, we're in storylines, there's recognition. It's showing us to be just people Mm -hmm. with lives that that actually threatens the status quo. And makes people uncomfortable because they like things the way it used to be. Right. Um, which is very much out of the playbook of the history of our nation, you know, if, and I mean, and that's, and this is really what it comes down to, like the transphobia, the homophobia, like all of that is carrying on the legacy that still continues to this day with racism in this country. It's about just recognizing that individuals are individuals and that should be the end of it, but we can't have that because like then I'm not special anymore. How dare oh. you? I I need to be, you know, in my privileged position. I need to have my advantages. Um I'm kind of getting hyperbolic, but that's that was an interesting perspective when they kind of said that they were like, you know, the more the more that we are there, quote unquote, and accepted, that upsets the apple cart basically. Like it makes things disruptive. Um And I find that very intriguing because I keep seeing and granted, this is sort of a media bubble, but I keep seeing these reports about how like the younger generations are the most fill in the blank, Uh the most like trans active, supportive, the most pansexual, the most like non-binary, the most gender affirming, like all of these things. Identifying those kind of things is becoming and it's rather I'm. It's so odd i will say it and it seems weird to say it but it's odd to me that that is a thing because of you know us our generation Mm -hmm. um in a lot of ways you were you were doing your best to hide so that you could just get through and then move on now it's very much uh this is who i am hey look at me kind of mentality and i'm not saying that in a negative way but it's just very much uh, a attitude shift right in a way i mean culture shift. I, I agree with you because <clears throat> i think it is the gen x generation which probably pushed forward on the most activism to get the ball rolling and get visibility and and getting into a safer space. Um, I would almost say even even pushing back into the later end of the boomer generation. Because it was boomers, Gen X, millennials, then Zoomers. And Zoomers are basically enjoying the fruits of our labor. Well, not my labor, because I didn't really help with anything, but... <laughs> You know, but generation wise. Mm-hmm. So hear that, Zoomers? Be nice to your elders 
because you wouldn't be able to do what you're doing now if it weren't for us. Yeah, there's an interesting um, Substack article I'm going to link uh, titled Gen X was the political generation. Um, oh. And just in a quick review, like looking it over, it kind of explains about how like when you are young, um, that you are the, um, you know, you're more active, you're more motivated. Um, and how that, you know, relates to things and becomes a part of your identity. And I think that's very fair, um, you know, to, to have that be the case, because I think you want that to, you know, represent, you know, what you're, who you are, like, and, and I think you're very empowered when you're young. I find it uh, interesting as a recollection, Damon, how you talked about like when we when we were young, part of our generation was like we were just trying to get by. Like we lived uh -huh. in a way, we lived in fear. We operated in fear because we were scared right. of on several fronts. We were scared of being outed. We were scared of like being hate crime. We were scared of like uh -huh. dying of AIDS. Uh -huh. um, and that's just that portion of things. That's not even getting into like bullying, racism, like those things that are not specific to our community, but also impact right. uh, some of us. So yeah, if not all of us. Yeah. And it become, it became like, I'm, I'm like going through my mind. I'm trying to remember, like I, I remember I was reading something or watching a video about something about, um, you know, our generation, generation X and, like you're talking about us becoming activists and becoming political. And a lot of that had to do with, I think it was the, like a lot of the radicalization in a ways, a lot of us were trying to, I don't want to say breaking against the norm, but we were becoming our own people. And we were some of the few that were, there were many of us that were willing to step up and actually say, no, this is not okay this is not cool, this is not good, this is not right, and we're now wanting to put a stop to it, or getting it so that we're on the same level. Um, and, you know, weirdly enough, the thing that popped in my head was um, uh, like Catholic Planet and environmentalism and, and those kind of things, that there, there were things that were out there that in a way made it so that you would be willing to you had to do something to make a difference. It was you, not, you know, I mean, yes, all together and all together we could do something great, but it, you had to step up and do something in order to make things happen. Um, it's kind yeah. of a really weird way to think about it, but that was something that, that popped in my mind about this situation and about why we are where we are, you know, um, it took a lot of work and I mean, it, it took a long time, but, um, it's weird to think that just eight years ago, seven years ago, was it 2016, 2015, a burger fell. I feel like it was, uh, 2015. Um, it was actually, yes, 2015. I feel like it was, yeah. Um, so nine years ago. Yeah, so nine years ago, um, you know, there was marriage equality. And I feel that was this big, it was this giant step and this great milestone and this big stepping stone for our equality and equity. And since then, or maybe because of it, it is everything has now been attacked. Like, okay, mm -hmm. so now that they can get married, now that the gays get married, let's attack something else. Let's make something else an issue. Let's make something else a a especially with the the gays. Let's make something um attack something else. So we we I mean there's the whole trans bathroom thing, which I think is just complete and utter bullshit. Um no one gives a fuck. Like I don't want to say this in a like, way and I mean this wholeheartedly i don't give a fuck who's in the bathroom 
I just need to shit. Like, <laughs> like I'm just saying, <laughs> like it shouldn't, it, it shouldn't matter, but whatever. Like that was the thing, but here it became this big thing. And I remember it being such a big thing and, Oh, you know, some guy in a wig is going to go into a women's bathroom and, and, pretend say that they're a woman and they're going to be a pervert about it. I'm like, well, you know, no, if, not to be mean, but if they have, if they're going to have the balls to do that, they're going to, they're going to do it no matter what anyway. Like, mm. yeah, I find it interesting in looking further at this. Um, this Gen X was the political generation article on Substack. Uh, it says in here, it says, writing in 1999, a professor said of her Gen X students, this is a quote, the decent souls among the Generation X are, I believe, more impressive morally than my own baby boom generation. But at every turn, their best instincts are thwarted by the hegemony of the boomers. Mm. Uh, hegemony means leadership or dominance. Um mm. This is especially the case when it comes to developing the capacity for moral and political judgment. And I find that interesting because what they're basically saying is like Gen X like is much more moral than previous generations. And yet the previous generations are holding back the advancement. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say um, uh, the person, Freddie, who wrote the article says, well, we can't say yet that it's the Gen Xers who are holding down the younger generation. Hell, the silent generation is fighting like hell to not leave the stage. And the boomers will rule for a long time. Right. And I was like, ooh, there's some tea. Like, that is really the truth. That That's so the true. older generations are clawing like, yes. to, to be relevant and, and hold their position and yeah. it is kind of problematic because the baby boomer generation was called that for a reason it's a significant portion of our population and it's impacting yeah. so many things like so we have covid so many people took early retirement and we're like peace out i'm done like this isn't my bag F screw this noise right. and i say that coming from the public health slash medical like circles of our country because that's the thing that we're facing now is that we have entire healthcare systems that are still shaky because they just mm -hmm. haven't been able to get younger individuals or replacement individuals hired in. Yeah. And so we know that there's this boom coming that we're going to have more people in senior living communities and nursing homes than ever before in another like 10 years. And yeah. who's going to take care of their asses. And there's a part of me that's like, baby, I want you to check your conservatism. Cause do you know, that a trans like person of color nurses aide is going to be the one wiping your ass when you shit yourself because you're so old. <sighs> like you best check yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry. but, but until they are gone and this is a horrible thing to say, but I'm going to own it because it's an all Tino shade episode mm -hmm. until they dead, they still hear. Yeah. And it's kind of something it, I said to my mother many years ago about my own grandparents. We ha I think I brought this up before. We briefly uh, talked. My mom had said to me, I just want you to know that my parents, your grandparents, are racist. And we're just going to we're just going to get this out of the way. She's like, they've had bad interactions with black people and that has skewed their perception. And it is not fair. And I don't want you to think that I feel that way or that like that is the world that we should you know live in. And I thought that was like the biggest cojones. Um, mm -hmm. for my mother to like own that and talk about it. And I said to my mother, I said, well, I said, right. They are a part of a generation that oppressed and until they're gone, that will be an issue. And I feel that way about like this whole thing about these older generations that when they're gone and they're no longer here, younger generations will be able to hopefully advance things. Hopefully. Sorry, Dave. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. No, that, that's the tea. Like, I just, I feel that way fully. And it sounds weird, but that's sort of the issue that we've been dealing with political, po po politically for a long time. There are people that have been sitting in offices for decades, decades. And it, they are trying, they are holding on to these old beliefs, old ideas, 
old traditions, old bullshit that doesn't that that that, that doesn't matter now. Like just keep it keep it like, like the the world has evolved, the world has changed, um, mm -hmm. and you have to understand that not everything is going to fit into your your cute little box anymore. Like just just. No matter what you want to believe, nothing is going to fit into your little box anymore. We have, we, have, we have evolved and changed so much that we are no longer doing what we were 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So you either need to move with it or get the fuck out of the way. Right. I was just thinking that. Like, yeah. <laughs> move with it or get the fuck out of the way. And it just, it that has been one of my biggest issues. Like, I love... Like I appreciate some of the quote unquote tradition and it's great that that's there, but baby, we, 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 we're, we're gone. It's gone. We're, we're past it. We are trying to build our own things. Now we're trying to build our own traditions now. And whether you like it or not, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I, and just the whole, like they need to be, dead or dying or whatever or get out of something um oh what was i watching it was something it was oh it was it was a <laughs> weirdly enough it was a law and order svu episode and it bothered the piss out of me because it was this case where this guy needed to be um exonerated he was in prison he was falsely accused um mm -hmm. he confessed um because he did not want to um out himself Okay. Um, he was, his alibi would have essentially outed him as a gay man. Mm -hmm. Um, and it had been found out and they, you know, the investigators figured it all out. They go to the state, you know, representative, that could, the governor that could potentially exonerate him. And it is this senile old man who has been, that is literally just sitting in this position. You, they're, they're talking to him and he doesn't do the work anymore. But he's still in the position. Mm -hmm. Like he, he's only there. The only reason he's there is because they don't want to let it go. Mm -hmm. So he has people doing the work for him. His aides are doing the work for him. And this will, they, were, they were never going to get it done. So they, you know, it was police and it was, it's TV. So they, you know, one of the investigators like said that he was getting something signing a letter of a of of recommendation or whatever and ended up being the again tv it's fucking tv he right. was i mean he was senile like right anyway but it just it was it was so very true a feeling of like what is going on right now with these like mitch mcconnell's and and Lindsey Graham's and all of these people that have been sitting in these positions for like years and years and years that are holding so much shit back that if they would just either get out of the way, like retire or pass away. Right. I think like it would, it would change the whole landscape because we know that there are people willing to, fight for our rights and are on our side as it were, mm -hmm. but they have to get through all of this crap right. in order to do it. And it's going to take so much to get through it. Right. They can only do, you can only do so much. No, I mean, I think that's fair to your point about like the people that are propped up, like that are in place. It, it's interesting because on the, non-conservative side one of my key issues is we have people who have been in positions for decades and while they've you know been very beneficial in terms of like progress you know there's part of me that's like you're old like you're beyond retirement like you're practically double retirement like you're actually you know not be in that position and yet they're not i don't feel like they've done very much to like guide and mentor and create opportunities for younger generation leaders to come into place to, you know, learn mm -hmm. 
the lessons of the older generation on how to get the things done that need to be done. And yet, at the same time, I have to recognize the landscape is also always changing. It used to be in U.S. government that there was agreement and bipartisanship and attempts to, like, mediate and come to the table and get something done. And er not everybody was a winner. That everybody gave something and said, OK, we're not going to get this, but we'll do this. And that's really been gone for, what, a decade? Like, it's really shifted quite a bit now that they don't want to get along. They don't want to try to achieve things or accept stuff. I mean, it's it's really sad that we keep seeing, like, just passing the budget gets punted. Right. And it's like, oh, well, we're going to extend it for 30 days. We're going to extend it for 60 days. And, oh, the government might have to shut down. And that's been going on every year for I don't know how long now. Like, it's just right. absolutely, you know, maddening that they don't – that they, as collective Congress, cannot be on the same side of something in agreement. I mean, even look at what's happening in the world right now. We haven't really talked about it much. But it's also a key factor, like – you know, this episode is focusing on like, you know, the state of pride here in the U.S., but there's also pride across the world. And then there's uh -huh. just like humanity across the world. So, you know, the situation that's happening with Israel and, you know, um, Pakistan and Gaza and Hamas, like, it's just so mind boggling to me that. We as a country slash and, a, and our government cannot get on the same page of just human decency. Right. Like people being killed is wrong. Period. End of story. It's, it's so weird to me that we like can't even get on that page. I mean, but we've been struggling with this for, you know, ever technically. But it really, you know, came apparent in the most recent thing with the invasion of Ukraine. And it's, so it's just wild to me that like it's infectious you know and that's part of the thing i think that's problematic is i feel like we as more progressive individuals have underestimated the the other side of view of things and how i think we presumed very much falsely that people understood equity and like fair treatment. Yeah. And I think that got reversed in a way because people were like, but where's my equity? And it's that yeah. like analogy thing. It's like, bitch, it's a pie. Like <laughs> you're not going to lose your pie. Like we're all eating from the same pie. Right. So you're not getting less. Like the optics are are fucked. Like they're they're messed yeah. up because people are like, "How dare you take this away from me? We're not taking anything away, you fucking moron!" Like, but again, this goes back to my big issue that you know the American education system fails our country that we just oh, can't too. seem to understand. We can't critically think. We can't problem solve, and we surely can't think three dimensionally or like in a different capacity to be like, oh. So because I because a law was passed and it now says that Damon deserves to have recognition, I in this dramatic like representation am butt hurt because I feel like it's somehow taking things away from me. And it's like, no, it's not. Yeah. yeah. It's not, that's been it's the not only, what's going on. That's been the main thing. Like I feel like people need to understand just because we give these people or this thing. Right. Doesn't mean it takes away from you. It just gives them an opportunity to be at the same level that you have probably already been. Right. The reason why it's referred to as equal rights. Yeah. Wait a moment. Be right back. So, um, in addition to the ACLU mapping legislative uh, website, there's also uh, currently an ACLU. Uh, message to Congress, U.S. Congress. So if you live in the U.S. and you're interested, we'll include the link. There's a Protect Trans Care um, project that's going on right now that you can fill in information and it will send a message to Congress um, letting them know how you agree with uh, gender affirming care, especially for transgender youth. And like it's a whole pre-filled in uh, quoting thing. 
it's good. I have mixed ideas about this. The reality is, is that if you send something personal, it's much more impactful to your government representative. But I also understand we live in an age where that can be overwhelming. People get anxious. They don't know how to do things. Hence, these type of things, these templates, these pre-filled in items can be very useful for that. So there'll be a link to that as well. Um, in addition to that, there also is going to be a link to the trans legislation tracker. That was hard to say. Trans legislation tracker. Um, it's the 2024 anti-trans bill tracker. Um, it says there's currently 593 bills listed to note. 255 of them carried over from last year, but are still in consideration this year. Um, 40 across 42 states, 42 have passed, 332 are active, 219 have failed. Um, mm. So there's more information to read about what that uh, is. Yeah. And this is going back to, and if you scroll down and you kind of look through things. So just as comparison, in 2021, there were 143 bills, 18 passed. Last year, for the entire year, there were 600 bills. Wow. Which is more than, what, one a day? Not like one and a half a day? Something yeah. weird, wild like that? 87 of which passed. And we're, you know, not even halfway through the year right now. So, you know, and this is this is the thing is, you know, it goes on to explain, like, you know, the type of bills, that there's different categories. There's education. There's sports. There's health care. Um, there's also things about birth certificates and employment. And, I mean, it's just wild this stuff that's happening as a as an adjacent item you know i serve on the the hiv statewide coalition for my state and one of the things that we also like address and look at is the criminalization of hiv which kind of probably sounds archaic because mm -hmm. it is um but you know legislation has been passed in many states and we've been addressing it in our state to have these laws like eradicated or reversed that having HIV is not a crime. Like, it's a medical condition. And it shouldn't be used against you for as just the level of discrimination or, like, you know, a penalty when you break wow. the law for something. Um, one of the most recent things that happened last year, as an example of that, was that they, they passed a law that, you know, was expanding existing things that already were out there. It wasn't even expanding it. It was, like, duplicating it. It was so stupid that if, if there was an altercation with a, a officer of the law and the individual did not disclose their communicable condition that put the the officer at risk that it increased the penalties of offense and like jail time and fines really oh yes so if if i'm being arrested and I spit intentionally on the police officer. If I have a laceration and like I fling blood at the police officer, like they were trying to compound the penalty against the individual because they were interpreting it as an intentional attempt to infect the police officer or individual wow. representing law enforcement. Oh, yeah. Wild stuff. The thing is, it wasn't necessary. All that stuff was already on the books. You didn't need to do that. It was already there. Ugh. So that's an example of like the kind of crap that goes on. And I use that as a parallel to say like they, you know, they're and that's the most recent thing that I think most of us here in the U.S. are aware of, like these anti-trans bills. Um, yeah. The anti-drag like stuff. It's all like, yeah. you know, that meme from The Simpsons. Won't someone think of the children? And it's like, are you thinking about the children? Because last time I turned around, they're still being sexually abused. They're mm -hmm. still being, like, you know, treated ill. They're still not getting a good education. You're fighting to remove free lunches in the public school system. Like, really? Really? Okay. Yeah. It, like, yeah. I, I had to pay for my lunch. In my yeah, and that's great system. for you. Yeah, had an I did too. They deposited money. And... Yeah, but again, it's just it just goes, it always goes to show you that these people don't give a fuck about children after they're born. Oh, that's fair. Oh, <clears throat> that's Ooh. fair. That part, that part. Where, where's the fan? Um, um, David, please, <laughs> please put it up. 
Uh, the, the other one, too. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I got a double yeah, shade there. It does, Thank you. It does, it, 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 no, but it's it's true. It's it's the thing. It, oh, God. Sorry. I'm about to get on a rant. It, it pisses me off. Because <laughs> it's the thing that it bothers me the most. Mm-hmm. Like, we are more than willing. We have literally done it. We've removed Roe versus Wade. We are literally willing to say, hey, as long as that fetus or what cluster of cells is in your body, we must protect it with every fiber of our being. We must do everything in our power to make sure that that baby is born. Mm-hmm. And then once it's born, All right, it's now a person. Window. It's now a person, therefore, you're on your own, kid. Like, you know, can't get it, can't get, can't get, um, can't get an education. Well, that's on your parents. Can't get to get, can't get fed. Well, that's on them. Um, can't go, um, in, in some, in art to kind of bring it into the pride, like feeling a little different about your body. Well, fuck that shit. Push that shit down because heaven knows, like, you're you're fine. You were born a male or born a female, and that's it. That's the end of it. Like fuck all that can, shit. Can I, can I talk to the boomers for a moment? Hey boomers, <laughs> you want these children to be born. These these children will be born as I think we're still in the Zoomer generation. And do you know what the Zoomers are doing? Alpha, alpha. Actually, I think we're in alpha right, now. We're in alpha, alpha generation. You know what they're gonna do? They're going to carry on the traditions of the Zoomers. And you know, and, and even Gen Xers, probably. Probably even worse. You're going to hate them. Why do you want them to even be born? God. <laughs> but that, I mean, I don't understand that... this. You want them and protect them. and But when they are born, think of how they're going to grow up. Especially considering a lot of these children are being born from millennials and Zo- even zoomers now they're getting up to that age or in, into appropriate age I'm gonna put That's quotes so in there for reasons but it, and, to, and, to, and they're gonna I, learn from their parents and what are their parents acting like stuff you don't like think about it well not only that jeff but like the math doesn't math and i realize we have failed our Again, our education system, like, God help us. Like, the math not be math. And it's not the new math. It's not whatever. Like, the, th- <laughs> the thing is, it doesn't make sense. So if the idea is to keep your p- status and position in our country, right? Like, to keep your wealth, to keep your land, to keep your things, to keep your place in society. Why on earth would you want to force more people to have children that are socioeconomically repressed that are people of color because like you're creating your own problem you're living in fear that you are the minority and you want to stay in power but if you keep the cycle going there eventually will be so many of them like you will have to no longer like you won't be the majority and I say that as I'm as I'm talking about it, I realize like that's why they're passing these laws because they're scared. Like they don't want mm-hmm. people to have rights. Oh, like you don't have a birth certificate, you don't get to vote. Bullshit. Like the person was born. There's a record. They've existed. They've got a social security number. Like, what the hell? Like you're you're not willing to put in the work to give the equity, to give them the ability to be just a citizen of the U.S., to have the same things that other people do. It's so wild to me that they're like, oh, no, no, no. Like, you know, we have every life is precious. And as we were saying, Uh until it's not your responsibility. Um, And now that it's here and then you're like, and it's so weird to me because I'm like, oh, okay. So the reality is you're still trying to, Keep your status quo, but I, I still think the math doesn't math. I, I just think it's so messy. I'm like, nope. I'm like, because the reality is they're like, you're going to take away. I mean, one of the biggest things that is a concern, and this came about in the prior administration, was that there was potential, there was talk and rumor that they were going to remove all contraception. Not just the pill, not just like the 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 mm-hmm. insertable mm-hmm. ring, not just the the, what is it, the IUD, like all of that stuff, 
also condoms. So if you think we have an STI like problem in the US, which we do, and syphilis is back on the upswing and exploding and congenital syphilis cases are out there. And we are maybe, 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 big footnote, big, big, big star on the footnote, we might be making progress in less HIV cases. It's mm-hmm. not, we don't, we don't think it's a trend. We don't know what's going on. It's just been a little bit lower of late. <laughs> Yay. Part of that has to do with like prophylactics and prevention. Like that's a piece of the puzzle. And yeah. so like the fact that they, that we might be facing a future where they'll be like, nope, we're just not going to have any contraception at all. Oh. Really? Yeah. Okay. I guess all you motherfuckers want to have warts on your dicks. I don't know. Like, it just it just <laughs> blows my mind as a concept that, like, that's a part of the, of the land, of the, you know, the forefront of the future. Yeah. Whatever. It's you so weird that that's... A... You know my opinion Go about ahead. this country, that we're not a democracy, we're a capitalist society. Meaning, yeah. it's all about the money. And I think that's more of a boomer view than anything. So, definitely an okay boomer moment here here but uh here's here's another thing okay boomers let's talk again you're trying to get rid of a completely another industry that makes money especially pharmaceuticals and contraception and stuff like that all medical supplies this is a big big piece of the money pie probably not a good idea to take some of that money away okay let's stop being counteracting each other you know being paradoxical cool something like that let's 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 focus on this okay now do you understand what i'm talking about here you know you're all about making money making sure we get that money because the pharmaceutical companies pay your bills you want to keep that money, better not take away their drugs. Okay, you can continue. <laughs> but that's but you're you're not wrong, Jeff, to talk about like the paradox of like like they want to keep their wealth and growing their wealth and and expanding the wealth gap between you know those that are privileged and those that are not. And it is it's wild. It's kind of like oh so. Like if you do, if you outlaw something that makes that, you know, is an industry that makes money or whatever, that, that does really kind of complicate things because then that's cutting into somebody's pocket, somebody's bank account, somebody's Uh stock portfolio. So, yeah. And all of that is to say, this is incredibly complex. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like every day, every week, every month is about another small way to make an improvement and to keep forging on. And I think we as a nation are very weary. We were ill-prepared. I mean, the whole globe was ill-prepared for 2020. Yeah. And we're still paying those effects. I, I said that year, I said, we have to get 10 to 15 years out of this before we can begin to reflect and look back and see all the, the uh, impacts and the ripple effects. Yep of that stuff. And I'm going to be very intrigued when I'm much older to see all the studies and the stuff that comes out that says like these, this is what happened. This is how it impacted lifespan. This is how it impacted mental health. This is how it impacted, you know, communities and all of these things, because it takes time to have perspective and more importantly, collect the data, basically the information and then compile it and determine and be like, Oh, like we knew it was bad and it was fucked up. This is this is this is how bad this like this is yeah. this is how that you know came in a, about and affected things. Who knows? It might even be after our lifetime before they really get a scope of that kind of stuff. Um, and I bring that up to say you know that that's also a piece of the broader landscape of you know our community and the things that are happening. And so we are in the midst of Pride season, and um, it is not Pride everywhere in the U.S. at this time of year. I think we've kind of referred to it before. You know, in this more southern belt of the U.S., it's hot. Like very yeah. hot. I don't know. That doesn't stop Minneapolis. Minneapolis oh. is in the northern part of the U.S. Yes, but it's usually the hottest days of the year that they had their pride. 
Oh, well. So like I'm thinking of like the you know Southern Belt, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, Texas, like Arizona, New yeah. Mexico. Like a lot of them don't have Pride in June. They're like fuck that shit. They move it to like the fall. <laughs> they try to they yeah. try to September. get out of Yeah. <laughs> they try to get out of like, you know, the 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 human bacon crisping on on the sidewalk <laughs> effect of or asphalt of things. Look, the the sweat stinky people is only a small portion of people's kinks. <laughs> that part. True. That part. Like Atlanta's pride is in October. I right. just looked it up because that's, that's something yeah. I just I just always think about. I mean, and I think that's com- completely reasonable. And fa- <laughs> excuse me, and fair. Um, so yeah, like like you know, June is Pride season, and for those that kind of don't know, um, if you're newer to the podcast or, or have not been aware of this, hi. Uh, <laughs> in June, you know, we call it Pride season because of Stonewall, because in 1969, you know that that riot, pushback, social justice like event had ripple effects and created a lot of like a liberation movement and that turned into a lot of things over several decades and so here in the u.s we use that as a focus point even though there were events that took place before that like you know the compton's cafeteria riots and other things that have you know been kind of pushed to the back and are starting to get their recognition um because luckily there are better spirits among us who bring that history forward and say hey like this is like, you know, Stonewall was not the first thing. It just happened to be the thing that got, you know, the most recognition. So we use the month of June as, like, pride. Yes, Jeff. Quick mm-hmm. t- counterpoint. <clears throat> well, it's not June. August 10th is the Pride Parade and Festival for, for Austin, Texas. Mm. Technically during the summer. It's the same. But how hot is it in August versus June? Probably about the same. Oh, yeah, I would think that's kind of the I've same. I've lived there for over a decade. I should know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I asked you. I'm like, I was I was fearful you were going to say, well, it's actually hotter in August. I'd be like, well, then the theory, you know, just doesn't hold. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, there's there's a lot at stake. I... I ask that if you have the opportunity to participate, to go to a march, to go to a parade, to go to a rally, to go to a festival, to do something, to participate, to be involved. You don't have to, like, you know, run topless through the streets. You don't have to wrap yourself in a flag. You don't have to make a like a political artistic statement and wear fake blood like you don't have to do any of that. Just being there as a body makes a difference because numbers count. Mm -hmm. Um, And I say that as a part of like in this month, this next coming weekend, I will be going to Columbus, one of the largest prides that's in the Northeast region of the U S outside of New York city. And like I've gone many a time and I'm looking forward to going again because there is something for me I have to phrase it this way, magical about the experience of about being so around so many people mm-hmm. uh, collectively at that time. And we're not all doing the exact same thing, but we're, you know, there and out and doing stuff. You Unless know. you have social uh, anxiety about being around so many people. That's fair. And if, and if that's the case, there are other ways to be active and to do things. Um, you know, you can support businesses you can mm-hmm. make a donation. You can be active in, you know, an organization remotely. You um, can do a podcast. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Um, and then let your more extroverted, introverted co-hosts like promote it when they're out and about in public, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, even the you one know, which is somewhere else in the city, which I still haven't seen. And I've been here for almost a month. Actually, for a month. Of, Has no, it wait, been a wait, whole month already? One, one more day, and I will have, have been in Cincinnati for a full month. Wow. Tomorrow will be my one-month anniversary of arriving in Cincinnati. Uh, congratulations. Time flies. 
that's crazy. <laughs> What's so funny, David? Yeah, sure. You're congrats. The way you said congratulations, like congratulations. I mean, he, he, he still hasn't say, met Damon in person, <laughs> despite <laughs> being in the job. same city. Well, I was thinking more about like, I mean, like, like part of it is the disbelief that it's already been a month for me. But then also, I was like, I don't know if you're like really you know, have welcomed Cincinnati to yourself with open arms, you know, and, and feel comfortable. Um, I say that because, you know, given the circumstance, you made that, you know, choice and understandably it was like to have a job. Apple Max income. is my friend. To be fair, fair. I, I would say I was partially coerced. And I do say partially because I still agreed to it anyways. Maybe well, because I, would... I had the fear of having to look for another job. I was going to say, you say coerced. I feel like voluntold is another way to slice that. And I looked at it positively. Here I am. I got a brand new desk. I even I even took your advice and got one of those uh, 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 things to hang for my keyboard and mouse. In fact, Ooh. I'm using it right now, which is one of the reasons why I'm a little further from the camera. The only thing I found is that uh, I don't need to pull the drawer out uh, because... Uh, the way it hangs in the corner desk, uh, it's just right there, and it's still very much available. So it okay. doesn't hide under the desk, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Right. No, that makes sense. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's there's lots of different ways to be active and to do things um, and contribute, possibly. Uh, yeah. maybe you have a particular hobby or a thing that you enjoy doing and you can use some of that time as a, as a, something that can be appreciated in another way, That's especially fantastic. if it's a thing. Well, I think about like, if you're a content creator, um, and it doesn't have to be social media, like web-based content. Like if you have a, a skill that you make a thing, um, whether it's, you know, involving something like Etsy or whatever, like you can make a donation. Um, because a lot of organizations try to raise funds for various things. So they might have like auctions and giveaways and that kind of stuff. There's, I think there's lots of opportunities for people to be involved, but, um, you know, representation is, is important in that case. Um, and part of the thing I want, you know, to make sure that it's, I think I've already alluded to it is like, take the time, get to know what the circumstances are when it comes to voting and the opportunities of what those impacts can be, uh, because it literally does matter in the future of like the decisions that are made. Um, and I, I preach that from an aging perspective, because I know when I was younger, I didn't pay that close of attention. I wasn't really like that engaged. Um, and since I've taken on my current job, the full-time job, I'm abundantly aware of that because every day, I am hearing about things that are policy, that are executive order, that are whatever, that are impacting the attempt to do the work. And that's just my little slice, as opposed to other things, you know? Um, you know, and you're trying to figure out that stuff and what that will mean um, for folks when it comes to that. That being said, um, I didn't want to make this all like very, you know, you know, grumpy face, um, fist in the air, although that's an important part of it. There also is going to be a link to uh, on Wikipedia. I found this interesting. There's a page of 2024 as in the year in LGBT rights. Um, it's a list of notable events that have happened um, this particular year. And it's not just specifically the U.S. It's actually around the globe. And mm. I thought it was pretty cool that it talks about like. Um, for example, on January 1st, same-sex marriage became legal in Estonia. Hmm. Missed that somehow. Um, February 15th, Greece's parliament passed a bill legalizing same-sex marriage by a huge majority vote. Um, hmm. Just things of that sort. You know, there's some, uh, there's some, it's mixed, you know, some of the, the things aren't stuff so great, that's happening. Yeah. But I was like, oh, okay. Um that's cool to know that there's like, you know, a process for people to track that stuff and, and you can know um, what's happening in the world as well as uh, here. Oh, so, wow. What's that? Sorry, just it, there's May 1st, the United Methodist Church 
allows same-sex marriages in their churches and strikes down its 40-year ban on gay clergy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the May 1st UMC uh, allows same-sex marriages in their church and strikes down its 40-year ban on gay clergy. That is interesting considering I grew up in UMC. There you go. So, huh, I didn't know that. Especially yeah, considering I'm... in, I was an active participant when I was a kid in, uh, in church events, and I overheard one of my pastors giving the, I still love them, I don't like that part of them. Oh. Which Gross. probably kept me in the closet longer than I probably should have been, uh, because I think that kind of scared scared me uh, a bit about the thing. Thinking, oh, same sex marriages are bad. Gee, thanks, Pastor. For putting out well, such I mean, a good thing, and now here they are now allowing same sex marriages in their church, and no longer banning gay clergy. Right. Well, I mean, notably, if you go to visit the UMC, the United Methodist Church Wikipedia page, it talks about the 2020 through 2024 schisms um, and how that the UMC has been dealing with this very issue for a number of years right now. And that there were some basically there's been a split and a fracture of the Methodist Church over th this exact area and how they have like kind of split off um in various ways because they felt there was some very conservative like leaders within this, you know, political grouping that were like, absolutely not. Um, mm. So I think part of how this came about was because those that opposed it created their own um, portions it says, uh, in March of 2021, conservative leaders of the UMC unveiled the name Global Methodist Church for the new traditionalist denomination, along with a new website and logo. Um, so they they basically were like, OK, fine, like you want to push us in this direction? We disagree with it. We're going to like create a new slice of of this or whatever. Um, that's my take on it. I'm not fully vetted in that. But yeah, I agree. <laughs> interesting stuff to learn about so yeah there's there's much to be done things to be understood um so stay tuned years not over yet yeah. definitely True. and we've got a couple weeks left in the month so we'll see how that uh plays out although i will say this i haven't seen we used to talk about a couple of years ago. You remember we had this big discussion about like all the corporations changing their logos and like uh -huh. everything was going to be rainbow and blah, 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 blah. And I feel yeah. like a lot of that has shifted to the side and maybe yeah. that's because corporations realize like they just can't paint a rainbow on shit. So actually um, the, the gays are noticing that. Like I've been listening to a couple of people that I have been on TikTok that have indicated some th things along the lines of there are now corporations are kind of stepping back and stepping away. Like usually you would see the rainbows everywhere and all of the things and they would be reaching out to, you know, LGBTQ people to like show up at their events and make, you know, be representatives and, you know, you know, parade them around for the sake of like, hey, it's, you know, gay pride month and we believe in the gays kind of thing. But that's not happening as much. And not a public. part of it, well, I think, yeah, not maybe not publicly, but I think a part of it is because there's a lot of concern on the corporate side of things, given what happened with Bud Light and Target. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of the repercussions. They're afraid of the, the backlash, the, the negativity that comes from it. Um, and they could, you know, potentially be like, if they would say something like something to the effect of like safety and, and all of those things, like if you make those concerns, but there there's been, it has been noticed. It has been recognized and noticed. There are artists and what have you out there that are noticing that the, the, the corporations aren't reaching out to them to like mm -hmm. do the things. So 
um, and like I noticed it too. Like normally I would see a bunch of them, and I haven't really. Um, I know a few that have, but you know it it it's it's fewer and far between. It's not as big a deal as it was in the past, like past even like last year. So, is it a sign? I don't know. Well, I think it's two things. Like I agree with you. Like there's less promotional opportunity less marketing mm-hmm. money that's directly going into like the hands of artists and celebrities and those type of things. Yeah. And yet the money is still flowing out. It hasn't been shut off. It may be affected. Yeah. It may be less question mark because mm-hmm. sponsorships are still happening, but instead of it, I think being like media, like focused in terms of like a celeb promoting a product I think it, you know, turned into we will make a donation to we will we will sponsor this in the form of a check like to this event, to this Mm -hmm. whatever. And they don't make a big fanfare of it, I think, because of what you were saying, Damon, that they don't want the backlash. They don't want the the scrutiny, you know, the whatever um, in that case. So it's like, oh, all right, you're going to have a pride event. Well, instead of like having a spokesperson on a national campaign, you know, and giving them, you know, like a half a million dollars, we will, you know, donate five thousand dollars to a hundred different entity like event things across the country. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that's my perspective. I don't have any proof of that. I think that that's a different avenue to still be involved. But I hear you on the like they're shy to be so bold in their yeah promotion or that kind of stuff i guess yeah and i mean and i may have said this when we talked about it before but i honestly don't mind when companies do uh uh like during during pride season like quote unquote join in the festivities and start having rainbow logos and all this during that time of year um because i still feel uh, that yes they're trying to make money off of uh, pride but they're also showing that they're supporting it but they also need to do that in other ways as you're basically saying donating Mm -hmm. to events donating to charities uh relating to lgbtq making sure their own internal uh policies are matching or in alignment with that Mm -hmm. um otherwise they'll be shown as hypocrites in those cases um and i think that there's a lot of companies that were doing that which do align maybe not perfectly but but they they do align uh for the most part and i think some of them even got part of that backlash or at least we're reacting to other companies getting that backlash. It was like, okay, maybe we shouldn't do that just so we don't get into that sort of trouble. But right. uh, I don't, I don't mind them trying to profit off of pride with making pride based products, because I don't know about you, but the gays like buying pride Yeah, we are a bit of a consumerist like population, <laughs> but it may also have something to do with having more disposable income. Um, <sighs> just wow. Supply and demand is all I'm saying. What? It's what? Just like, basic it's procedures. So, no, just, I think that's spilling tea. I think that's the truth. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, not having kids. You can't do things like like uh, um, sell a pride edition of a beer. Maybe if it's a unique yeah. recipe, but. <laughs> <laughs> you you can you just can't be yeah. an international conglomerate yeah. because yeah. like Rheingeist in Cincinnati mm-hmm. has for several years had a pride edition like version of yeah. their one of their beers and stuff. Um, so I think you can you just like I think it's more on a kind of a local level. Also to that what you were just saying, um, I was gonna make the comment like oh I'm at the stage now where I am okay with like the endorsing promoting like it is pride season like you know here's the rainbow version of our logo or whatever but to me all the things you said jeff are absolutely valid and on top of that to to yes and 
I want you to do that all year long to everything else. I want you to do that when it's, you know, African American History Month. I want you to do that when there are other populations that are celebrating their heritage and their culture and their community. That's what I would like to see more as an equity is like you showing that, you know, it's other opportunities with other groups as well, not just, you know, rainbows for pride. You know, I can yeah. be educated. I can learn through your activism, your support about other entities that I'm not necessarily familiar with. So, for example, I would personally be OK if I saw logos and things change around Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's totally valid. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm saying is like, that's OK. Like, be equitable, I think, in your approach about support and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Hmm. This has been the annual rant about about <laughs> consumerism and during pride. You're welcome. <laughs> welcome yeah. to our sorry. Thank I haven't looked at Saturday for attending our cup talk. I haven't looked at Ryan guys in a while. I may have to get some stuff. Sorry. <laughs> Are they, do they have a bunch of stuff consumerism. They're promoting? Like that's that's no, pride no, stuff? they don't. No, no, not for pride per se. I just have oh. noticed um, things that they have that I didn't know they had anymore. They've expanded on some stuff that I didn't know that they had expanded on. Ooh, I like the twenty twenty four pride shirt. Sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's to prove Jeff's point. <laughs> oh, is it, is it, is it, is it there? Oh, hold on. I don't know what you guys are looking at. Here, I'll put it in the I'll put it in the chat. So what Ryan guys tends to promote and put out uh, a version of their logo, like we were just saying, like with pride colors and stuff. Um, so they have a, a 2024 version, and uh, a portion of all the sales will go to Glisten, um, which is an advocacy advocacy group. <laughs> Serving LGBTQ youth. Wow, that we was hard. Triple XL. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's still a thing that like is kind of bothering me a little bit. The yeah. sizes and shit that happens. They're like, yeah, they're like, oh, four X and five X. That's expensive. That's hard. And I'm like, we get it. We're big. We're fat people. We're we used to know having. It's more expensive because it's more cloth. Just, just right. Put we, a little we, arp charge on it. It's fine. We're used to it. Right, it's a it's a size tax. We get it. Like we're well aware of it. Because many a time you go to order a shirt and you're like, "Ooh, it's fifteen dollars," and then you choose three x, four x, five x, and they're like twenty dollars, thirty dollars, forty dollars, and you're like, "God damn." Yep. I have to buy our um, CMC polos every year, and it's like, "Oh, that's nice." Here, here's the prices, and then it's for these many, it's like the same price, and then every time it goes up. Every X you add adds a dollar or two or three. Well, because mm -hmm. it, they're not, they're not, they can only balance it so, so far between the extra, extra smalls and the uh, triple XL might balance each other out in cost or something. But then when you go above yeah. that, it doesn't really balance out. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Anyways. That being said, I think we should probably nice. wrap anyway. up. <laughs> Random aside, looking at things, so just keep looking. Anyway, that being said, moving right along. Well, thank you, everybody, for for joining us for this All Tea No Shade show. Um, the tea has been spilt. Uh, the uh, shade actually was thrown, even though we said no shade. I apologize about that. I think I was, I, I did, I, oh, I, I did that. We once, all did, in a point. way. Um, uh, corporations uh, do better. Uh, government. Let's do better. Uh, okay, Boomer, is all I got to say about that. That's what the kids are saying, right? Okay, Boomer. I don't thing. think they're saying that anymore. <laughs> I'm not keeping up with the kids these days. Nothing, nothing, nothing says out of out of touch 
ageism. Like, is that is that what kids still say these days? Are they still saying that? <laughs> Gary, you're turning red. Because I'm dying over like, <laughs> the hysterialness of that, like... <laughs> Like I'm the youngest one here. That says whatever the kids say these days. <laughs> I, mean, I don't pay any attention I mean... to that. I just don't. I don't even understand why people even enjoy TikTok. I'm like, yeah, whatever. What's a TikTok? I, I want something that's longer than six seconds. Okay. TikToks aren't six seconds. That's Vine. That's been gone for like years. Same. Same <laughs> difference. <laughs> I want an authentic YouTube. I do not want a two-minute uh, uh, porn video. I want at least five. Ten would be better at the at the low end of the thing. I want even. I know. I skip through, get to the good parts, <laughs> but I want it there because sometimes I want to edge my way to it. Okay. <laughs> So this, this, this is the impact. This is the impact of the youth culture and their technology and social media. It is hampering orgasms. It is preventing <laughs> release. No. It is getting the way of edging. And if you have anything you. to say about that, if you want to, okay, Gen Xer, or whatever, <laughs> whatever the appropriate verbology is, is these days, you can do that in several ways. You can go to our blog at cupsoutloud.com and leave a comment there. You can shoot us an email. You can leave us a voicemail at precinct one we'll talk. You can leave us a comment on our Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. That comes along the appropriate place that you're all. You can chat us up by joining our entourage at bit.ly slash telegram dash dol. If you want to know when we're recording these shows, so you can just okay Gen X or uh to me. I mean, right in the chat, you're welcome to do that. I'm not going to be offended or anything, but you're very welcome to join us and do that. So don't think that that, that will end up banning you or anything. Although I do have the power to do that. Uh, you can find out when we're recording these at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You can get various merch. Support us. Show us. There is still a merch item or two that we still need to put up on the store that I'm waiting for some some uh, 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 pieces of before I put it up, um, which has been several months in the making. Uh, at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, uh, you can find some, uh, some of those designs were designed by Smashy, who none of our opinions necessarily mean any <laughs> match any of the opinions of the Smashy. He may align us on, on a lot of them, but but some of them he said here, I don't know. He's not here to, to give his own. But you can get more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash smashing the bear. And we thank him for making some of these designs. We love them. Uh, you can also subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash comes out loud, which by the way, when it, we put in the post there, you get free post show and you can comment on them. If you want to send us a donation because you actually agree with everything we just said here, or at least a majority of that, you can send us some cash at paypal.me slash comes out loud. Uh, you can review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere that you can get podcasts. And you can find me anywhere on the internet if you think that uh, want to okay Gen X or directly to me uh, at box step, box puppy, box cup, box. Something or other. Damon, how can people complain to you? <laughs> yes, I'm sticking with this bit. <laughs> if you wish to get in touch with me or yell at me, I mean, I might like it. Um, you can catch me um, as T Theater Cub 79, that's T A T A T R E C U B 79 on most beer related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter, our pup umbra seven nine on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. So, I mean, yell at me if you want to. I might like it again. Uh, or you can find me if you're for the safe for work stuff. You can go DMA Gamer seven nine on Twitter or TikTok. Those I would prefer you not to yell at me because 
that's my game and stuff. But you can have an opinion. All opinions are welcome and valid. They just could be wrong. Gary? So listen, if you want to talk down to daddy, there are a couple options. But you have to go find Gary Bear 73 somewhere online and then you can just send a message. Because maybe I could be into that. Or not. <laughs> Stick around and find out. And when Try it. Bad. Try me. <laughs> Try me. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>